Now I love the fact that you have cleaned up your voice so beautifully, gotten rid of all your scar tissue. As you know, you've got to get into your head voice as quick as possible, going up in your range so you can release your voice with Brian. And I just love that voice. It's so distinctive. The challenge of a, teaching a voice like that is not making, making him sing everything a very perfect diction, but allowing him to do some of that cool stuff, the way he'll pronounce a certain word, you know. That's what makes him distinctive. I don't, I'm not going to rob him of that. I'm going to enhance it. I'm going to say, if you do something like this on a word, really milk it. You know? If you purse your lips on a certain vowel or consonant, and that it gives it a certain flavor and nuance, do a little bit more of that if it works. So it's helping him weed out that garden saying, here's what we're going to keep. We get rid of the weeds, you know, chop the chicken, spit out the bones. That's what we're doing with him. And you know, it's a very distinctive voice and I would hate for anybody to ever mess with that. Way to go. Yeah, man. I see. Now, if that gets crinkly, we, remember what we do is we take a run at it. We, we're going to bend over at the waist. You're going to say, ma, 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 Just take a bow. Ma, 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 See? You can't reach. Now, if it squeezes, then take a lower larynx. Remember, if, when you say, ah. Uh, it's just the beginning initial vibration of the vocal cord. You don't add the rest of the musculature to it. It's almost like if you're lifting weights, and you, if you start light, you engage very few muscle fibers. There's no chance of ripping a muscle. So when you're going to go, ah, it's, it's, you know, it's how Andre Bocelli does that little, Santo que chi salve. He doesn't go, ah, and pull up and he doesn't go, ah, falsetto. He goes just on the inside edges, the same place as the, ah, See that little bite? That's where you're gonna get. And you do that by getting rid of those muscles. So press underneath there. Squeak, staccato, squeak. Yeah. Yeah. Right on, man. See that? No tension, no squeeze. So I found that I could see, I had this rare ability to see inside people's throats. You know, right now science is really not that advanced like we'd like, like it to be because in order to see into people's throats accurately, we'd have to have cameras that form, uh, that film about 440 beats per second because the wavelength on concert A, which is on that A, is 440 beats a second down uh, uh, and, and as you go up the scale it speeds up as you go down the scale those those uh, cycles uh, slow down so in order to get those vocal cords which are waving really quickly uh, inside the throat each vibration creates like a sound if I go uh, that's the initial vibration of the vocal cords and you speed that up and then eventually you have a pure sound uh, so you have a vocal fry on the bottom uh, chest voice right after, uh, then you have middle voice, uh, and then you have a pure head voice, and then whistle voice. And it's very, very effortless. It's just you open your mouth, the vocal cords zip up. I could see inside a person's throat when they began talking before they ever sang. I said, oh, you're going your whistle for son. I said, yeah, I'm suspicious. No, 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 I can tell. I can hear the vibration of the vocal cords and I can hear their efficiency and I can tell that right now you, you will be able to do that. And I... Oh, the land of the free. Yeah. The home of the brave. Yeah, man. Very nice. Woo! I've been studying with Brett and the staff here at Sing Success for over two years now. I uh, came in and I was extremely scarred from singing in smoky bars for about six years all through college and wanted to clean up my upper register and get some power behind it. A very common question people always ask me is, is it, Brett, is this going to be safer? Because it seems like what you're saying to me 
is that everybody out there is trying to get you to produce sound using all of this oomph, all of this, this diaphragmatic support and this open throat technique and this place the sound further forward. If talking took as much effort as the majority of training the voice takes, we would lose our voice talking by the end of the day. Now I teach 10, sometimes 12 hours a day and I won't tell you that I don't get tired, I do. Michael Jordan gets tired even though he's playing with correct technique. It doesn't matter how good your technique is, the muscles can only take so much. But the amazing thing is at the very end of the day I'm sitting there at the piano going, ah, I'm not, uh, I'm not yodeling, I'm not breaking, I'm not flipping into falsetto, I'm not tightening up, I'm just not able to go as loud. The muscles are not as, you know, they're not as fresh. And obviously, you know, I had a doctor tell me once that, Brett, you're in a perpetual state of vocal fatigue. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. He says, your methodology and your teaching is so good and your chords are so healthy, yet you use your voice way too much. And I said, well, isn't that amazing? People who need me, I can't tell them no. There are people who need this. And I say that um, as long as my voice will hold out, I'll do it. It's because I pro protest bad teaching and bad singing by teaching.